This is the video for lesson number 14, Modeling and Solving Word Problems in One Variable. Please make sure you have the worksheet that was handed out in class today for your homework that goes along with this video and says lesson number 14 up at the top. Here we go. Our objective. You will be able to create an equation using one variable to model a scenario. You will continue solving equations when variables are on both sides of the equal sign. So we're going to continue with real world examples, except this time they're going to be a little bit more complex than the ones that we have been working on earlier this week. Here we go. At the top of your page there are steps, so these are going to be similar to the ones that we used last week. So step number one, please copy these down is we are going to create let statements. So just like we did last time, we always create our let statements, but this time we might have more than one. Step two, set up an equation. So you will go back to the word problem, reread it, and set up an equation that makes sense according to the scenario. Step three, solve the equation. So use all of the steps that we've talked about in class, such as distributing, combining like terms when they're on the same side, and getting variables to one side of the equation in order to solve. Step four, sorry, <laughs> step four, please make sure you answer the question or questions that are being asked and remember to put it in a sentence. And step five, always check your work make sure it makes sense and that it is correct. Please copy down these steps and when you're ready we'll go to example number one. Example one. The following pair of polygons have the same perimeter. Use the information below to determine the measurement of each side of each polygon. So we have to find every side in our polygons over here. Okay. Um, so it seems like we weren't given that much information, but we're going to follow our steps from our ste uh, above and see what we can come up with. So step one, create your let statements. If we need to find the measurement of each side, then we have to come up with a couple different let statements. For example, the first polygon over there, the pentagon in blue, Every side is the same, so we are going to let 12x, which we see over there in our diagram, be equal to each side of the polygon, or pentagon. Now we need to come up with let statements for our triangle. There are three sides. I notice that they are all three different sides. So I need three let statements. X plus seven is one side. So is six X plus nine and X plus 10. All three of these represent a side of the triangle. So step one, create our let statements is done. Step two, set up an equation. Now notice this time there are no keywords used, but we do see that it says the following pair of polygons have the same perimeter. Okay, so what I'm thinking right now is that the perimeter of the pentagon I'll just draw a little diagram of the pentagon, is equal to, so I'm using that equal sign, which will help me create my equation, the perimeter of the triangle. And I'll just draw a triangle here instead of writing it out. So now I should be able to set up my equations using the expressions that were given that represent the side lanes. So remember that the word perimeter means that you are going to add up all the sides in each figure. 
So first, to find the perimeter of the pentagon, we are going to add up 12x five times. Bring down the equal sign. The perimeter of the triangle, we have those three sides over there, so I'm going to bring down each of those three sides, adding them up. x plus 7 plus 6x plus 9 plus x plus 10. So step 2, set up your equation, is done. Now we need to solve. So if you look on the left-hand side, these are all like terms, a 12x, a 12x, okay? We have the 12x five times. So if we add these up or combine them, we now have 60x. Bring down the equals. Over here, look for like terms that are on the same side. I see an x, a positive 6x, and another positive x. Remember, there are ones here. So if we add those up, that becomes 8x. Look for your constants, a positive 7, positive 9, and a positive 10 adds up to a positive 26. If you'd like, you can pause this video and solve on your own, or you can keep following along. I am going to now solve for x. So I need to get them to one side. I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. And now we have 52x equals 26. I need to get x alone. I will divide by 52. Be careful here. x is equal to 1 half, or 0.5 is equivalent. Okay. So typically, we're used to stopping here, but go back to your steps. We solved the equation. But now we must answer the question, so go back and reread. Use the information below to determine the measurement of each side of each polygon. So now that we know what x is, we can use that value and plug it in here to find each side of the pentagon. We can plug in x here, here, and here and evaluate these to find all three sides of our triangle. You should still have room down below. So underneath, we are going to show how we find the length of each side of each polygon. So we are going to find the side of the pentagon. Okay, my work is nice and neat and organized and labeled. We know that the side of the pentagon was represented by 12x according to our let statements. So I'm going to plug in half for x, evaluate this, and we get 6. I'm going to do the same thing for each sides of the triangle. Go back to my let statements, and I see that x plus 7 was the first one, so we have half plus 7, that equals 7.5. Another let statement was 6x plus 9. So now we have 6 times a half plus 9. 6 times a half is 3, and then 3 plus 9 equals 12. One more side, x plus 10. So a half plus 10 equals 10 and a half, just like that. So we found all three sides. But now, we must put our answer in a sentence, so that way we explain that we are answering the question. Here we go. You should have room. If you need to fit it on the side of your page, you can. But somewhere on the front, we will write it in a sentence. For example, the sides of the pentagon are each 6, and since no unit was specified, like centimeters or inches or feet, I'm just going to use the word units. And 
the sides of the triangle are seven and a half, twelve, and ten and a half units. Okay. I always just like to circle my statement or put a little cloud around it. And we are done. So when you are ready, you can go on to number two. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what just happened there. But number two on the back. So we have Tim's baseball team was required to buy two pairs of uniform pants and two baseball caps, which total $68. A pair of pants cost $12 more than a baseball cap. What is the cost of one pair of pants? So step one, create our let statements. Remember, we always use the question to help us create our let statements. So I'm going to choose let P be equal to the cost of one pair of pants. Okay. Now in this example, it's a little bit different than the other ones that we've seen because there's really two pieces of information that are unknown here. We know that we don't know the cost of one pair of pants, but do you notice what else we don't know the cost of? And that is a baseball cap. So if I use this sentence here, I'm going to underline, a pair of pants cost $12 more than a baseball cap. We can come up with an expression that will represent the cost of a cap. So let's see. If pants cost P, which I've identified here, and pants are $12 more than a cap, then a baseball cap is $12 less than the cost of a pair of pants. So we're always going to use the same variable that we use in our first let statement to help us create our second one if we need one. So in this case, if we take the cost of a pair of pants and take away $12, that will represent the cost of one baseball cap. And we're going to practice more like these ones in class. So we create our let statements. Step two, set up an equation. So I'm going to go back and reread and see if I can come up with an equation. Tim's baseball team was required to buy two pairs of pants and two baseball caps, which total $68. So similar to the examples we've done in the past, I know that my equation should equal $68 because that is the total. Okay, think about what Tim is doing. And he is buying two pairs of pants. So I'm going to map it out first before I plug in my expressions or variables. And so that implies that we're going to add two caps or baseball hats. Okay, so now I need to come up with what represents two pairs of pants. Go back to your let statements. P is the cost of one pair of pants. So two pants would cost two pay. My plus sign. And now two caps. If P minus 12 is the cost of one baseball cap, then we need to take this expression and double it, or multiply it by two, to come up with the cost of two baseball caps. So I will write it like this. Okay. Some of you may be thinking of another way to write this equation, and there are other ways. For example, we could also write an, an equation like this. Two pairs of pants and two caps. Okay. Um, so either one, they're both equivalent. I'm going to use the one from up above. Now that we've created our equation, we just need to solve I'm going to distribute the 2, and we will get 68 
equals 2p plus 2p minus 24. Notice that I have p's on the same side of my equal sign, so I will combine the two of these. A 4p minus 24 equals 68, and continue solving. Okay, add 24 to both sides. 92 is equal to 4p. And lastly, divide by 4, and we get that p is equal to 23. Don't stop here. Remember your steps from the front page after you set up your equation and you solve it you must answer the question. So, here it is. What is the cost of one pair of pants? And now, in this case, we got lucky because we solved for P. And remember your let statement for P. It represents the cost of one pair of pants. So, we are done. We just need to put it in a sentence. And we will have the cost of one pair of pants is $23. Okay. Sometimes a question like this might also say, and find the cost of one baseball cap. So I'd like you to think about how could you determine the cost of a cap if we know the cost of a pair of pants. Just something to think about. We are all done for lesson number 14. Thank you.